the ocean has inspired many tales, stories, legends, and myths throughout history, some which are alive still in our minds today. So today I will be ranking some ocean myths and legends. I also asked you guys over on my Instagram to tell me about some legends and myths you know about, and I'm also going to rank some of those. Some are not really myths and legends, they're just like scientific curiosities, but I included them here as well as an honor to my Instagram followers. Here are the tears. I'll crush your barnacles. <laughs> I don't know why I did that accent. Yeah, I'll crush your barnacles, eh, mate? I don't know. This is bad. Then we have walk the plank. Bad, not so bad. Shiver me tenders. It's medium. And I. That's a good one. And there be gods here. I'm gonna be ranking these legends and these myths in terms of coolness. This is absolutely an objective classification based on my personal opinion. Okay, let's go. Before we start, I wanna shout out my Patreons over on Patreon. Thank you so much for making all of this happen. You are fantastic. Thank you. We are starting with the Loch Ness Monster. The Loch Ness Monster, also known as Nessie, which is very cute, is a creature from Scottish folklore and is said to inhabit Loch Ness, which is a lake in the Scottish Highlands. Supposedly, there have been many Nessie sightings since the beginning of the 20th century, but all the photos that have been provided as evidence were discovered to be hoaxes. So, too bad. No Nessie. But the reality is, I don't know if it's because it's in a lake. I don't really care much for the Loch Ness Monster legend. Maybe because I've never been there. Maybe once I'm there, I'll care more about it. I mean, I don't really dislike this, but... I don't love it either. So it's gonna be like shiver me tinders. It's a medium. I don't care. Cool, cute monster. It will be cool if there's a cute monster, but sea serpent. Ooh. A sea monster that has been described in several mythologies, several cultures since ancient times around the world. Um, hmm. Hmm. There supposedly have been a lot of sightings of sea serpents, but of course they've all been before modern technology and sonar existed. So it's really likely just people seeing things once again and imagining things when they're out at sea or seeing maybe a whale and thinking it's a serpent. I don't know. Shiver me tinders. I like sea serpents. I like serpents. I like snakes. I like reptiles a lot, actually. It's not really some like a myth that floats my boat, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, mermaids. Mermaids are cool. I love mermaids. I used to want to be a mermaid when I was a child. Probably everyone knows about mermaids, but if you don't, they are an aquatic creature with a human upper body and a fish tail. And they appear in the folklore of many cultures worldwide. And some sailors seem to think they saw some. Probably what they saw was either a manatee or a dolphin after having been way too long at sea. The idea of what a mermaid is changed over the centuries and at some point was probably influenced by the sirens of ancient Greek mythology, which initially were half human, half bird, but became half human, half fish in the Christian era. Unfortunately, there's really no scientific evidence to suggest that mermaids or sirens ever existed, which is a shame. But yeah, I love mermaids, but they are still not god tier. They are high tier. The legend of Atlantis comes here. Gods, god tier. I love the legend of Atlantis. I wish it were true so bad <laughs> because I would love to see it, <laughs> to dive there, to just explore the, the story of such a island nation. It's cool, but it doesn't. Atlantis is a made-up kingdom, first mentioned by Plato in his works, what was the name? Timaeus and Critias, and he created it as an allegory to the arrogance and hubris of nations. Atlantis was a very advanced naval technological nation. The Atlanteans became very greedy, they wanted more, they wanted to rule a lot of the world, and so the gods decided to sink it. Yeah, so that is the legend of Atlantis. People don't even know if Plato had an idea in mind of where it should be when he wrote it. People think, so think that he associated it with Santorini, but some people also have said that if Atlantis would have existed, it would have probably been where Asurus is, but it does not exist. But I love it. I love this idea of a lost civilization that lives underwater. I don't know. I just love these stories. I don't think it exists, but it is God tier legend. 
I love it. The Bermuda Triangle. This is a region in the Western North Atlantic where supposedly there have been more ships and aircrafts disappearing than anywhere else in the world. Many have checked and that's not true. It's just one of those things that people saw read once and it's stuck in their mind and they created all this thing around it, all this buzz. I don't like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, mm, I don't like this. I, 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 it can walk the plank. Okay, this one was told to me by a Insta, someone on Instagram, Lemuria. I did not know about Lemuria, Lemuria, Lemuria. I did not know about this myth and I already love it. This is another god tier. Lemuria was a continent proposed by a zoologist in the 19th century to explain why there's lemurs in Madagascar and India, but not in the Middle East. So it was supposedly a continent that united India and Madagascar and that for some reason was sunken. And it's called Lemuria because lemurs. And I love that. I think it's got tier just because it's called Lemuria and it's to explain the occurrence of lemurs. <laughs> I just love that. But unfortunately, this theory of Lemuria was discredited once the movement of tectonic plates was discovered, which explains why there's lemurs in Madagascar and in India, despite not being in the present connected. They were in the past, not anymore, but that's explained by the tectonic plate, by the movement of tectonic plates. Too bad. I would love a continent called Lemuria. Complete, like, imagine an entire continent sunken in the Indian Ocean. That would be pretty cool. But no. But it be, there be gods. It's a god tier. The Kraken. Many people told me to talk about the Kraken. Of course, the Kraken is legendary. It is a legendary cephalopod, usually represented as an octopus, like a giant octopus. And r people really don't know what originated the legend of the Kraken or the myth that there's this gigantic cephalopod that can englobe entire ships with its arms. But a lot think that it might have been due to sightings of giant squid because giant squids can be quite giant <laughs> they can grow up to 15 to 60 meters and where you are at sea sometimes it's difficult to understand exactly the size of something if you see it from far away because there's no real scale in the sea except yourself but if something is far away sometimes it's a bit difficult to tell how big it is so people think that that's where the legend of the kraken comes from there's no real evidence that there ever was a cephalopod that sunk a ship. So, um, I have a, the thing with sea monsters is like, I like the, le I like marine legends. I, I think it's exciting. You know, I, I, I like reading about it, but it, they also create this sort of subconscious overblown fear of the ocean. A lot of people still imagine like giant monsters coming out of the depths to eat them and I don't like that so if we put it on a scale it's gonna go to shiver me tenders and I do see a pattern here all the sea monsters or all the monster sightings are in shiver me tenders and that's why yeah and funny enough the first recording of a giant squid in its natural environment was only obtained in 2004 that's super recent that's kind of cool I like cephalopods now we have Cthulhu. Cthulhu is a cosmic fictional entity created by H.P. Lovecraft. He is worshipped by cultists who want to wake him up from his slumber to bring upon the end of humanity or the world. I'm not sure one or the other or both. I don't remember. That's cool. I like that. I like Cthulhu. I like his story. Um, we, I see a pattern. We have lost continents, creatures. <laughs> sea monsters and the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, so this is just a scientific curiosity. Dolphins sleep only with half of their brain shut down while the other one is awake. And that is true. That is not a, I mean, it, maybe some people think it's an urban myth, but it's a real one. It's true because dolphins are mammals and they need to breathe air. So they cannot sleep without being able to come at the surface while doing so. So they do need to have at least a part of their brain conscience in order to be able to come up and breathe. And I love dolphins. I love the fact that they are awesome and do this. So they are gods. <laughs> there be gods here. <laughs> okay, we have the Megalodon. Of course we do. Of course we do. So the Megalodon, it's a shark that did exist. There is 
proof in the past, but they are probably extinct for at least 3.6 million years. But due to pop culture and to movies, people seem to think that he it might not be extinct. But it is. For starters, there are no records of any megalodon since th for 3.6 million years. No teeth, no marks on any other animals, no dead carcasses. There's no evidence that this shark is still alive today. Also, the shark was probably a surface dwelling shark. He would not, would not be a shark that lived in the deep in the cold waters. It would need a lot of food since it was so big, there's more food at the surface, and if it lived at the surface, we would probably have some sort of indications that it still exists. It doesn't. So I love the Megalodon, I love sharks, I love paleontology, so in that sense I do like it. I like the fact that there is a Megalodon, that there was a Megalodon, I love the Megalodon, I love reading about ancient creatures or sharks, but I don't like the fact that people think it still exists, <laughs> despite all the scientific evidence against it. I already feel some people in the comments, but you don't know, you know like, how can you be certain? I can't be certain, but the evidence for the existence of the Megalodon right now is non-existent. Okay, this was something someone talked to me, it told me about, and it's related to someone said, I don't know, this person probably lives around the Baltic Sea, I don't know, saying that the Baltic Sea is so toxic that if you eat fish, you'll get sick. I researched a little bit about this, whether the Baltic Sea is specifically more polluted than any other areas. And apparently some time ago it was in the north of Poland. The, it was a very polluted area. There were a lot of organic pollutants, which are really bad. And heavy metals, heavy metals like mercury especially can accumulate in fish tissue and in animal tissue and they then can be transmitted to humans the same with all sorts of different types of pollutants but it doesn't mean that this is with all fish usually how fish accumulate substances in their bodies and in their muscles will differ between different species of fish it will depend on the, how they process toxins within their own body it will depend on how long they live so usually bigger fish will accumulate more pollutants, more heavy metals, so bigger fish, predators that eat other fish that already have heavy metals or these pollutants in their tissue will accumulate even more, like pikes and cod. All these sorts of things will influence how much toxins, how much chemicals a fish will have in their tissues. So it's not like all fish will have the same amount of pollutants in them, but some of them can actually really have a lot. So yeah, this sucks. Um, this is not a myth, this is a scientific, I wouldn't even say it curiosity, it's just true. Regarding the Baltic Sea, I guess it will depend again on which fish you are catching and where in the Baltic Sea and how polluted that region is. I'll crush your barnacles, that's not cool. That is not a cool thing. I don't like that. I do not approve. All right, this was fun. I like this. Let me see if I want to rearrange. So we've got dolphins and lost continents. Uh, there be gods here. Absolutely. Atlantis is the definitely my favorite myth and legend of all time. Then we have Lemuria, which I just learned about but immediately loved because lemurs. Dolphins, of, co of course, gods. Do we have any doubts about that? Mermaids, pretty cool and awesome. I wanted to be one as a kid. Cthulhu is cool. I like it. I like this idea of a giant octopus-faced dude who's super mean. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know much about Cthulhu, actually. But what I do know, he's cool. And in a story, I would not want to meet him. I would not want him in my world. Then we have the Loch Ness Monster, which I'm kind of meh about. The Sea Serpent. Um, I like the Kraken more than these two, though. I do like the Kraken, I'm not gonna lie. Should I put the Kraken here? Mm. Mm. E. Mm. Uh. I'll put the Kraken here just because it's an octopus and I love octopuses, okay? Mm. Do I? I'm having a hard time here. Okay, let's just leave it here and shiver me tenders, I know. The Bermuda Triangle, I don't care. Eh, walk the plank, you can't walk the plank Bermuda Triangle, go. And the Megalodon still existing, I'll crush your barnacles. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the this, I don't, this is bad, too bad. It's not a myth, it's not a legend, it's a true fact of life and science that fish bioaccumulate everything that is in the water, including pollutants. Um, and that sucks. This was fun. What do you guys think of 
my list. I think it's a very scientifically object. This is not subjective at all. Scientifically, statistically proven that this is the correct tier. So let me know how you would rank if you agree with this or not. I'm sure some people will be very angry with a couple of choices I made here. Do you want to know who else is a legend? <laughs> Lila's Big Sky. Leela is a legend. <laughs> it's about a Dumbo octopus from the deep sea. If you have any kids in your life, consider Leela as perhaps a Christmas gift. Christmas is more or less almost around the corner or as a birthday gift or just as a gift in general. Yeah. You can find it in any retailer you can ask or in the links down below. I am hosting a trip to Indonesia next year, which is going to be epic. A lot of adventure and underwater adventure and island really cool adventure. You can check out the itinerary down below and you can, there are still some spots available if you want to book it all. And uh, yeah, thank you all guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my Patreons and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.